computer. Okay, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am thoroughly delighted to have with us as our guest on Conversations with Creative Minds, Barry Rosen. Um, he is an accomplished, world-recognized leader in financial astrology with roots um, in the Vedic culture dating back to 1973 and financial forecasting since 1987. He's written five books and teaches classes in investment astrology since 1990. He is currently interested in um, extending his um, astrology experience and education in the realms of psychological and spiritual astrology. Um, so this is very much a part of his practice as well. Uh, of course, today we're going to be talking about financial forecasting and he has fortucast.com, F-O-R-T-U-C-A-S-T.com, where he works with um, financial astrology. So I am delighted, Barry, to welcome you to, uh, to today's conversations with Creative Minds. How are you? Great. Thank you, Victoria. It's so good to be here. And after working with you all these years on the magazine and, and writing for you, it's great to be here live with you. Um, so, yeah, what would you like to know? Well, um, I am curious, you know, um, Astrologic Magazine, which again, you have written for us, been a, very much a part of this for, I think, all of the eight years. Well, yes, all the eight years, yeah. Yeah, and... So as you know, we have a large um, group of astrologers who are subscribers, but also we have other people who are um, interested in things like tarot and dream interpretation. And so they are not astrologers, but um, I really thought that, that everyone could be interested in talking to you today about what the whole aspect of financial astrology is about. So if you wouldn't mind giving us an overview of how uh, finances and astrology uh, work together, how you work with them, I think that would be a great starting point. Great, thank you. Um, well, there's, there's two levels of it. I started out and I've kind of renamed it investment, uh, investment financial astrology, where I was kind of interested in forecasting what the stock market would do um, using astrology. And I, I had started studying astrology in maybe 1985 and I was, watch, I was watching the markets and I was kind of thinking, well, why is this market up this day and this market down that day? And so I, I'm kind of a researcher and I would just kind of, you know, try to, you know, and there's a whole realm of Western financial astrology, you know, that goes back to, you know, Gann was very, uh, a very famous um, trader of the century, one of the best traders in the world, was uh, interested in astrology, uh, Commander Williams wrote a book on financial astrology. There's a whole history of Western financial astrology. And um, J.P. Paramount, Paramount Morgan had a Western astrologer, Evangeline Adams. Um, and he said, millionaires don't use astrology, billionaires do. And he was a friend of mine, um, bought Evangeline Adams' astrology library when she passed away. And he was reselling a lot of her financial astrology book. So I, I got all these wonderful books from the 30s and 40s and 50s, you know, there, you know, 20s, you know, that, you know, we're talking, you know, so there's a whole kind of research realm history of it. it's quite interesting. And um, so people have been interested in this for a while. And but they didn't, they only had Western astrology and Vedic astrology is a little bit more exact, because v Vedic astrology has always been better at prediction. I mean, because they have what's called the dasha system which kind of talks about cycles and so i started out setting you know hundreds of years of, of the stock market and its cycles and the u.s stock exchange was founded in may of 1792 and that chart actually still works um and you could just predict how certain periods were going to bring certain patterns but a lot of financial astrology works because you know it's emotional and psychological and 
you get Saturn conjunct the moon and people get depressed and prices go down and you get Jupiter trining Venus and everybody thinks it's wonderful and prices go up. It's, it's not that simple, you know, but, you know, on, on some level, you know, we, you know, markets are very emotional and psychological. And, you know, when we get these kind of buoyant periods, people are buying and people are selling, but it's, you know, obviously it's much, much more complicated. Now, the second realm of financial astrology, which I've gone into more recently, is personal financial astrology. And people, when they heard I was a financial astrologer, they said, well, how can you make me more money? And they weren't interested in investing. They wanted to understand their personal karma. So I created a number of courses um, on helping people understand their charts and how their money karma was connected and starting giving the energy of the money gurus and you know Catherine Ponder and Deepak Chopra and all these great people who had talked about um, you know the, the laws of money and and so I started looking for that in people's charts and then doing consultations about that so um, and then I've come out with two books on that um, which are really the manuals to my classes um, so it's kind of interesting lately I, I, for a while though I started attracting a lot of gamblers into my business and I realized that wasn't the highest realm of what I could be doing. And so I wanted to help people with their personal finances more and just, you know, learning to give more to charity and tithing to increase their money karma and to get rid of psychological blocks that were blocking them from being successful. So that's the two, that's kind of where I've gone. But I still do both. I, you know, I still have my investment newsletter. Well, um, that is fascinating. And so is there a direct correlation between uh, the planets, uh, the zodiac signs, and uh, and how you do your financial forecasting for people? Um, well, now you're talking about individually or for the markets? Well, both. Um, we can take it from an individual standpoint uh, because I was hearing you say that you work with clients too. To right. Okay. So, so, in terms of the markets, I mean, zodiacal signs have certain energies. The water signs tend to be more bullish, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. And the, um, you know, the air signs tend to be a little bit more um, crazy, you know, a little bit more wild. But, um, it, it's you know it's it's not that simple. It's one small piece that you can look at sometimes. Um, with with people's charts, it's just really kind of looking at um, sometimes the second house of, uh, uh, in their chart and how the second house may be connected to how their family taught them about money. Second house is your ability to store money. You know, it's it's actually your your ability to save money, um, and often your family will teach you certain um things about you know money and so you know usually we don't like the worst worst one is like Kevin k2 in the second house because, which is the south node because people can't hold on to money very well or they you know and then obviously we like venus and jupiter in the second house um but but a lot of the but rahu in the second house and people are kind of gambling and their their their, their bank accounts go up and down a lot and things like that so you can look at simple things like that but it's you know, sometimes it gets more complicated. Um, you know, all the houses are connected to money on some level. Um, a first house is our intelligence, how we deal with the world. Second house is how we store money. Third house is our courage to move forth. If we don't have any courage in our life, we can't go into business and be in business for ourselves. You know, fourth house is property and real estate. Fifth house is investment and um, sixth house is debts and you know, if, we, if we're not, if we have Mars in the sixth house, we tend to not be very good about credit cards and accumulate a lot of debt, and that creates the ability to save money because we're paying off our credit card debt. Seventh house is business partnership. Eighth house is uh, inheritance or money from your spouse. Ninth house is generally good luck and good fortune. Tenth house is career and status. Eleventh house is um, it's actually not income. It's really our ability to network. Um, inc we have to look for some special things for how we find our income in, a in somebody's chart. But the, the 11th house is more connection with groups and how we interact. Maybe if we're a good networker with friends, we can be a good network marker, marketer if we have the strong 11th house. And 12th house is you know, maybe foreign investment or expenditures and things like that. So all the houses are connected to money. Um, and um, 
you know, obviously you know, astrology gets very complicated in what's, what's how, to, how to judge it. Yes, and so um, I have heard you speak before, and I think it is worth mentioning here from that broader perspective before we zero in a little bit more. Um, you speak of wealth in terms of money, but also the wealth that you see in your clients' charts that revolve around things like family, things um, other than just um, right, right. And money. Would you like to explain yeah, that? I think that's important. I mean, there, there is aspects of wealth. And sometimes people think money is just physical money, you know, and you know, people that have inherited $20 million from their family, but their the rest of the life doesn't work at all. They don't work. They don't have a purpose. They may be in, into kind of drugs and alcohol because they don't know what to do with all that kind of inherited money and they don't feel like they deserve it. Um, they may not be able to fulfill their desires. So there's a lot of different aspects of wealth. One of them is, you know, just wealth can be knowledge even, you know, your library, your, your you know, well, that's an aspect of wealth, your ability to fulfill your desires and make things happen. And a lot of people, some people just are magic, everything they touch, they just create money from. And some people like everything they touch, their business falls apart, you know, so that's an aspect, you know, we can see a lot of that in the third house. Um, there's the ability to kind of, I work with a lot of farmers and, you know, their storage, their ability to store their grain is wealth because that's, you know, the ability to grow and hold on to wealth. And they're, they're all, farmers are very wealthy in many respects. I mean, not lately because of higher, higher prices, but, um, you know, you know, food is kind of a, is wealth also. I, I always felt very wealthy personally because my dad owned a grocery store. And so whatever we wanted, I could bring home from the grocery store. So I always had this wonderful sense of, wealth from that and it was you know came from my family um but there you know and also knowledge of our source i mean you know we're here to not just accumulate you know a million bucks in the bank but we're here you know to you know our spirituality is important whether we're a good person we're compassionate whether we're interested in in finding god i mean that's a form of wealth too you know i think that's the highest form of wealth is you know, we're here to be loving and compassionate and kind and to grow in our connection with God. And that's you know, a very important aspect of wealth. And so in our charts, is it are, are sometimes better than others or, um, you know, certain years better than others for investing? Do these things shift or are they etched in stone? Yeah, of course. I mean, there's some people who maybe have good investing common sense their whole life. I mean, a lot of people don't have good investing charts. I mean, a lot of people, um, you know, in high school, my, my uncle taught a class on personal finance the senior year of high school, and they learned how to get a mortgage and how to get insurance and how to open a savings account and how to invest in savings bonds, you know, and they, you know, really practical things and you know they learned about the stock market and we don't teach our children that anymore so our children don't really know much about investing anymore um and i find um uh you know if you have a strong fifth house and a strong sixth house the sixth house is money that you accumulate from investment so if you have a strong sixth house um that means that you can and you, and you have a strong fifth house in your ability to invest and you can earn you can say accumulate money from investment, some people have this fantasy they want to quit working and they would just want to play the stock market and they're going to get rich quick. And, you know, there's a lot of gambling that can happen. You have Rahu in the fifth house. You get people who gamble on the stock market and inevitably that doesn't go well. You know, what comes up goes down. So investing is always about saving for retirement, slow and steady wins the race, um, keeping the long-term perspective so that we can, um, you know, have money when we're, retired and, and our, our youth are, are not very good at doing this anymore and it's very sad actually yes i i agree with you um and so this is this is what you talk about in your fortune cast is um is, are things like this or are you talking about the broader aspect well, of the stock market so my, my fortune cast newsletter is a i have a couple i have three different versions um it's actually you know information for traders um, and investors. So I have a, a letter called the ETF timer and ETFs are a basket of stocks. So like solar, solar energy is a kind of a 
everybody's interested in solar energy now. And so there's an ETF you can buy called TAN, T-A-N. It's like buying a stock. And um, if solar energy is doing well, then that ETF goes up and you're investing in maybe 10 stocks rather than just one that may or may not make it. So um, I cover ETFs, you know, uh, I'm trying to find things that are kind of moving and lately everything's been going down. So it's like, um, you know, it was easy, you know, when the market goes straight up, it's very easy to make money. When the market's going down and we're in a bear market, it's, you know, you really have to know what you're doing to make money. And that's why people are very frustrated now. So I advise people um, on, you know, what to trade and what, you know, where to make money. And, and but, you know, some people are, you know, they, they trade every day and I work with those people. And there's some people that are investors and they want to buy gold and hold it for two years and hope that, you know, eventually it will go up, but it, it hasn't been going up, you know. <laughs> right. Well, and, and so that brings me to the question of, I, I know when you write for Astro Finance for Astrologic Magazine, um, in the current issue, the July issue, you were talking about the trends of the, the market. And so is this something, is this the way that, uh, the best way to approach it rather than going on a stock by stock picking basis? Right. I, I, I um, you know, with, with, the, the problem with one of the reasons I've never done stock by stock, I did have a newsletter for technology stock by stock, but, but because technology, I knew technology was going to fall apart for a couple of years. So I knew that you could make money buying. So I actually discontinued the letter because, you know, I was, unless people were willing to go short or, or buy bet on the market going down, you know, they weren't going to make money by just buying tech stock. I find individual stocks are more difficult to deal with because you have to have an accurate starting time of a company. And sometimes the history of these companies um, is very complicated. They merge, they, they go bankrupt and they re reorganize. And, and sometimes getting the chart uh, the right chart that works is a whole kind of complex event. Um, sometimes, sometimes it's easy with a new company, you can just, you know, get it, but um, uh, there's so, as you know, there's so many stocks that it was, it was, it's been easier to kind of, uh, I've actually specialized in commodities most of my, most of my life, gold and silver and grains and, and, um, but within that, you know, they're all stock indices are in that group and treasury notes and currencies and things like that. So those are kind of broader things that I've specialized in. I, I can look at individual stocks and ETFs, but uh, they, it takes more time astrologically. And, and I'm never just looking at something astrologically because um, many years ago I learned that, you know, the astrology is like the hidden knowledge that helps you see things that other people can't, but you still have to use everything you know about the markets, you know, what the trend is, what the patterns are saying, you know, you even have a background sense of the fundamentals. I mean, if, if you know, we, you know, that's, you know, it's important. I mean, certain things are just not going to go up because, you know, we're in a recession or, um, you know, there's, you know, they, they're, they're just not in demand anymore and things like that. So you, you have to keep everything in mind. Yes, absolutely. So we are going to have some questions. If any of our viewers have questions, just type them into the chat. We have a couple already, but um, I'm curious to know, just as we launch into, here we are, um, here we find ourselves currently with the stock market having taken major plunge this year. We have on top of that, that we are emerging from this pandemic, you know, it's kind of um, debatable where we are in the trajectory of the, the pandemic, but it feels like it's over with at least right now, as far as the huge impact that it's had on uh, world economies. Um, and then we have this, this war that's happening that has popped up, the, which has created more supply chain issues. And so 2022, has had some significant challenges. Have you, did you see that coming into this year and where do you think it's headed? Yeah, I mean, I, um, I stayed on top of, uh, of you know, where, where the market was going. I mean, I, I, I looked at these long-term cycles and you see, I see a, lot of, a lot of my analysis too is kind of technical and you look at patterns and 
oversold, overbought conditions and things like that. Um, I mean, I, I got rid of my tech stock newsletter because I realized that tech stocks were going to be going down. I mean, when they've been, they've gone up, they were, they went up so much for so many years, you, nothing goes straight up. And people, when people start buying Facebook at $345, you know, you know, they're going to be in trouble because it's, it's just when you buy, you know, unfortunately, you know, the, investing is buy low and sell high, but nobody wants to buy low because it seems horrible. But that's, you know, that's unfortunately the psychology. But people, when you read the newspaper and somebody starts predicting, oh, Facebook's going to go to 500 and, you know, and you pay attention to that and you buy it at 345, you get killed. I mean, look what happened with coin, which, you know, which, which was the, you know, which is the stock that, um, and the company that handles cryptos. And, the IPO came out and it was, you know, when it was opened at some ridiculous price, it's gone down ever since, you know. So um, the, the bottom line is, um, uh, yeah, where is the stock market going? I mean, my long term cycle work on this bear markets usually go two or three years. Uh, we had a bear market from 2000 to 2003, 2007 to 2009, 1987 to 1989. Um, we also, you know, 1980 to 1982, you know, you can go back in history. So most of these declines, um, you know, they're quick and ugly. Um, sometimes you get, you know, NASDAQ fell 80% last time, you know, um, you know, when we had the dot-com bust in 2000. Um, so I, I, uh, my, my, I don't see this market um, stopping on the downside until next October, November, 2023. And so it's, um, now markets don't go straight down, but, um, you know, if you're, if you're looking for a buy point in the market, you know, if we're buying low and selling high, you know, we have to kind of wait, you know, until the end of next year. I mean, there may, there's always, there are always stocks that do well, even in, in bear markets, if they're in industries that, you know, are heavily desired. And, you know, finding those is very tricky. I mean, I have services that help me with that. Um, but for the most part, you know, um, you have to trade differently in a bear market. You know, we've got wild inflation. Um, unfortunately, you know, the inflation cycles with Jupiter and Neptune, you know, are, are not over, even though temporarily we are finally getting, you know, crude oil going down and gasoline prices going down. But this is probably, you know, Things you have these spikes up, and then you get retracements, and then you get another spike up. So there's another spike up coming for oil and inflation, um, probably next year into 2024. And uh, what'll happen is sometime this fall, usually when Venus is debilitated and Sun's debilitated, you know, usually you get you get kind of a depression in prices, and you know we'll think it's we'll think you know everything is fine, and then something will happen and. And you know, you know, war will break out again, and oil will go crazy again, and and inflation will take over again, and, and you know, we're in kind of a, as you know, we're in a very kind of crazy world at the moment. I mean, it's the the mess that started with the pandemic, you know, really goes quite a lot longer. I mean, it's not, you know, you can see, you know, now there are food shortages and energy shortages, and Europe is not sure they're going to be able to get through winter, and and. We've had Sri Lanka ousting their, their leader from 2005 because he created massive inflation and food shortages and people were waiting in line for a day to buy gasoline, you know, in, in Sri Lanka and they, they said enough. So actually in four European countries, we've had leaders ousted already. Um, I may not, you know, you have to read, but pay attention to the news, but Britain, we lost, you know, Boris Johnson. Estonia also had, had a turnover. Um, I think it's another country. Um, uh, and, and then Sri Lanka. So we may be getting more of those type of events happening. Um, and I think it's just kind of upsetting for the markets. Yeah. And it was Italy. Were you thinking of Italy? Italy. Yeah. Right. Italy. Yeah. And so you're actually, you were touching on a question that we had about interest rates. Um, will they continue to rise? And um, if so, uh, how long do you think that will happen? So you touched on that, but do you want to elaborate on that anymore? Well, um, yeah, interest rates, I mean, these, unfortunately, these inflation cycles, they don't, uh, 
they're very hard to control. Uh, one of the problems is, is that you know, the world has $200 trillion of debt and a, a lot of our leaders have been irresponsible for years, you know, printing money and things like that. So, um, you know, I, I hope the United States doesn't become another Zimbabwe, you know, or, you know, or we have a Weimar Republic where we have to take wheelbarrows of dollars to buy, a, you know, a, some, some, I don't think that's going to happen. We're in a different kind of electronic age, but um, um, yeah, inflation is going to be here until 2024. Um, and I, I don't know exactly, you know, how they're going to tame it, but, you know, it, it, it's, it's rather devastating. My, my sense is that, you know, the, the difference that we don't have to worry about Weimar Germany or, or, you know, those type of situations is because the government will just come in and say, okay, we'll give you, a, uh, we'll print some money and we'll give you a, a helicopter money card. And if you're a good boy, you can, you know, go to the grocery store and it will give you this much allowance. I mean, they, they kind of want to control us in that way. And um, if, they, if they create a crisis where the financial system isn't working, then, you know, they can do that. So, um, you know, there, there are large, there's huge forces happening in the world economically and politically. Um, you know, a lot of leaders are in the, around the world are trying to move toward kind of authoritarian, communist, socialist, you know, orientations. And and that trend may continue until 2028. I don't know why it stops then. I know Saturn in Pisces and Saturn in Aries is going to kind of, you know, foster more of that. And we, we have scarce resources. And so people have to kind of do something about it, you know. Right. And um, and so as we are looking, well, you, you touched on the whole monetary system. Um, what is your sense? What, what, uh, what can you see in terms of, the whole structure, um, you know, cryptocurrency w was, it was discussed that this may be the, the future of the way, you know, right. a global currency. What are your thoughts? What are you seeing on this? Well, I mean, um, you know, there are people, even the United States, nations kind of wants to move the world towards like one world, one government. And I, I don't know if that's good or not. I mean, um, um, you know, uh, I mean, I do, I, I do have opinions about it, but, you know, and some, the world would like one monetary system, you know, and one currency, you know, and, you know, it's, it would take a lot for that to happen it, and actually collapsing the whole system could lead to that. Cryptos were eventually invented so that, that they couldn't be controlled by government. And uh, if you remember, even in the 30s, you know, gold took over as the king, but FDR, you know, forced people to turn in their gold. You know, cryptos, you know, we've had a number of people trying already to legislate cryptos, you know, because uh, governments really don't want people competing with their ability to, to manufacture money. <laughs> and, um, um, you know, cryptos, have, you know, I think cryptos will finally be done with this fall into, you know, September. I'm looking at maybe at 13,300, but it's fallen 80%. And again, it's just like NASDAQ fell 80% with the dot com bubble. 80% is one of these kind of magical mathematical numbers that happen so now how much they'll come back into next year i don't know we'll get a nice bounce in cryptos but i don't um i don't know if they're going to take over you know the, the pie in the sky you know utopian model that people had with them i'm not sure it's going to happen um i think maybe um you know and, and if you've noticed there's been a lot of crypto companies going bankrupt um like two or three of them and this is kind of similar to what happened you know in the 1890s, you know, they, they, they invented bicycles in the 1860s in, 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 the, in the UK. And in, in 1893, there were 193 bicycle companies on the on London Stock Exchange. And they couldn't all compete and exist. And, and most of them, you know, died out. And I think all these kind of crypto copycats, you know, just, are, you know, they're not going to make it because it's just like... It's kind of like 193 bicycle companies. So there'll be there'll be a few, you know, maybe Bitcoin and Ethereum and you know, the big guys will will survive. But um, um, I, I don't know if they're the future of our world. You know, um, I, I, the guy who invented them really theorized theorized properly, but but um, it's it's really kind of um, daunting. <laughs> it's just. Yeah, we have Saturn and Pluto at work again now because Saturn went retrograde back into Capricorn as we went towards Pluto and Saturn and Pluto wants to be in control and wants authority. And so, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
Los Angeles already wants to bring back mask mandates, you know, like they can't let, let people alone. <laughs> well, I think your analogy to, to the bicycle companies is a good one for crypto. I think that's right on target. And we tend to repeat ourselves in history in those sorts of ways, don't we? Yeah. But, um, you know, there will be some money to make in cryptos again. Um, I mean, they're, they're currently going up a little bit, but I think this is just another blip. You know, you, you get these false kind of blips and then it goes, you know, and then there's this final exhaustion and then no one said, I'm giving up on cryptos. I'm never going to do them again. And that's when you buy it. You see, there's this thing that's called the, um, the exhaustion psychology. It's like when you got, I'm not going to the stock market again, it's fallen 80%, you know, forget it, you know, or, you know, home, you know, you, there was a time when home prices would, you know, even in California, there's, I had, I had a friend who had a mansion in California in the nineties and the collapse in real estate in the nineties. And she, she lost a small fortune and, you know, but, you know, th nothing goes straight up. Real estate's coming down too. I mean, it's, it's, you know, we have bubbles and, and. <laughs> yeah. And that's actually another question that uh, we've had on the, uh, the chat. And that is where is the housing market and uh, where is it headed? Do you have any insight on that? You know, um, you know the, the thing about housing, and there is kind of this local component to it, you know, like, obviously, everybody's moving to Austin, you know, and everybody moved to Silicon Valley, and those, those bubbles have not burst yet, you know, will they? I mean, sometimes you get X factors coming in. I mean, we have an X factor, you know, that people aren't paying attention to, the you know, late meat is drying up, and late meat, you know, supplies water to 70 million people. <laughs> in in the west right you know suddenly what happens if lake mead dries up and the drought continues and colorado river isn't filling it up again well massive migration from all those people dependent on lake mead you know where are they going to go they're going to go where there's water you know real estate prices could suddenly like fall apart in so it is very local um in in general you know real estate is prices are coming down because interest rates are going up. And if interest rates go up until 2024, um, there, um, I did some work on real estate cycles and there's two lows. One of them is in next year. And then one of them is in 2025. And again, they're always kind of local components. So if you're waiting to buy, I, you know, I, I think, you know, the, you can see the bubbles bursting 60,000 people pulled out of their mortgages last month because you know the, suddenly the rates went off. I mean, people were going to buy homes and they the rates they didn't get the rate they wanted and they couldn't afford it and they pulled out. So you know it's happening. Um, I have friends who are having trouble buying houses, uh, selling their homes now because you know it, it isn't. It, it's just starting to happen. So you know if you're wanting to buy, wait. If you're wanting to sell and you can get good prices and you feel like you can move someplace. That you want to move that's cheaper and safer, you know, I, I, it's probably a good thing. But it's it's very local, you know, you can't really, um, you know. Yeah, you know, I have to say that um, I live in Austin, Texas. So I know exactly what you're talking about as far as the influx of people. It's a very, um, you know, cool place to live right now. Actually, you know, it's not, it's over a hundred degrees today and has been <laughs> for the past two months and will be for another two or three months. But um, yeah, a lot of people like to come here. Uh, so I absolutely know uh, what you're talking about there. Um, okay, so we have um, another couple of questions. One specifically about Tesla, which, you know, is such a popular stock. Um, <laughs> but the question is, uh, you know, is this a, a good time to invest while it's down or the SPY, um, you know, long term? Do you have any thoughts about that? Um, yeah, tes te Tesla's been kind of a fun, fun stock. Um, you know, the, the we may be at a place and, you know, there, there's there's investing and there's trading. OK, so um, um, I, I, Tesla probably will go to 600 or 500 even at some point before it may be an investment buy. Um, um, you know, it may, it may have a nice bounce here. I mean, it may, you know, and it, it went down quite a bit. And, um, you know, if you're a short-term player, you, you know, you might make some short-term money on it. But these things are, you know, you know, this is what I do in my investment letters. You have to kind of time these things. Um, we're, 
this week we're going into a, a rate hike. And usually the Monday before a rate hike, which is tomorrow, the market falls apart because it doesn't want to be invested in case they raise rates more than they expect or something like that. So um, um, if you're long, uh, Tesla had a, had a nice rally the other day, I know. Um, um, uh, I, I personally think it will eventually go down more before it goes up. And, and you know, it, it's, it's, it's as much of a genius as, as Elon Musk is. I mean, he has to live with supply chains and getting enough batteries and, and you know, keeping people employed. And, you know, it's, it, it's, um, it, it's, it's, quite, it's been quite a ride, you know. It, it, it's and again one of those. I mean, look how much Google and and you know, I mean, Apple is probably the safest stock in the world to own because they have so much cash, and yet you know it's gone down quite a bit too. And if you if you're a long term investor, you know you can buy Apple on dips and hold it. But you know even then, even at some point, maybe it'll go to a hundred if 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 the rest of the market collapses. So you know you, you you it's we're not in kind of a you know there may we're in a trading period maybe. The market will go up into September and have a have a nice bounce. It usually likes Mercury and Virgo, which will have middle of August to the middle of September. So we'll probably get a nice bounce for tech then. But we could be all over the place before then. You know, um, you know, I would be. You know, and again, that's for traders. Again, it's it's like, you know, the trend is down. I mean, you know, it it it's it's it's. The only real hope we have is, you know, Europe is a bigger mess than the United States at the moment. I mean, unbelievable, um, you know, because they've, the, the euro will probably collapse to 90, you know, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's at par now, a little bit over par. And, you know, it was, you know, it was at 130, you know, it's cheap to go to Europe now again, which is great. Um, but Europe's an absolute mess because they've had negative interest rates. You know, you had to, to save money. You, they take money out of your account. And as they raise rates, they're, they're going to have this huge crisis. And um, um, so European money may flee to the United States and push the U.S. stock market up. That happened in World War I and World War II. And, and if Russia, you know, if, if NATO is stupid enough to kind of keep poking the Russian bear and, you know, if they go to war with them, that's a mess for Europe, and and you know European money will flee to the U.S. So that's the biggest hope for the stock market recovering sooner. Um, it's not out of the question, um, um, and we don't want to see war in Europe. But but you know there's a lot of stupid people over there. You know? Do you have um, any thoughts about the SPY um, ETF? Anything long term with this? Yeah, I mean, I cover that in my ETF newsletter. Um, you know, I, I think, um, I mean, there, uh, sometimes you have to be able to go short. I mean, if, you, if you're worried about the market going down, you could, there, there are vehicles, you can, there are ETFs you can buy like SH, which means you will make a little bit, you protect your portfolio when the market's going down. There's a, there's a way to hedge. Um, the, the SPY, um, you know, it may recover. I cover it every day in my newsletter. I, let me just pull up a chart real quickly. I mean, um, again, it's not a good long-term investment. You know, um, it's, it's overbought at the moment. So, you know, we have to kind of, we do have the Mars Uranus, you know, mess coming up. Although I, I actually, the st in the past, stock market went up into Mars conjunct Uranus and it likes Mars Rahu actually believe it. It creates more like, gambling energy and stuff like that so it's it is possible you know everybody thinks we're not, i'm not thinking crash next week um for the stock market with with that event but um every day is a new puzzle piece you know we we are going to get earthquakes and fires and explosions and you know uh, we've already seen what's happened in sri lanka and you know we've lost three other leaders so you know people are unhappy and they riot when mars is conjunct rahu so you know it's like um, you know, it depends how bad it gets in different countries. I, I don't know how much is that going to affect the stock market, but I, I'm still cautious about investing in SBY. Maybe I'm looking at August 11th, and let's see if we get um, a low there, and then maybe you could buy it for a month. But I, I don't like it into next year. You know. Okay. Well, as you're checking that out, um, we have a, a couple of questions here about: Do you see another market peak before we? Uh, turn back into bear territory? Well, um, the, only, the only thing that I've been kind of clear about, um, and every day is a new puzzle piece, which is why, you know, um, I put out a daily newsletter. 
Um, at, at the moment, I'm looking for a high in the middle of September. Um, and I, I'm thinking we could get up to 4,100 or 4,200 on the S&P 500. Um, and that would be about the most, uh, maybe NASDAQ will get up to 13,200, the NASDAQ 100. Um, I, I can't rule out that, you know, uh, the markets have reacted very negatively to the interest rate. You know, if we get a one point interest rate height and they give guidance on Wednesday saying, well, we're probably, you know, if things don't get better, we're going to have to raise it another point in September. You know, that's, that's going to spook the market and it'll, you know, it'll fall down to, you know, 3,600, 3,500, something like that on the S&P. And that could easily happen. So that's why the next two or three weeks are very volatile. And, and once that settles out, maybe there'll be a tradable buy. And, but, but it may be a short-term peak. You know, market generally does not like uh, Venus and Virgo. It doesn't like Sun and Libra. And, and um, you know, we just, the only thing, going for the market is, you know, gasoline prices are going down, oil may, you know, may fall apart, apart some more. Um, and usually we get lows in the fall for gasoline and, and energy. Um, that may, and the Biden administration wants prices to be low so that they have a better chance of getting elected. So they're going to do everything they can. Um, that, you know, whether the stock market will decide, okay, inflation's going away. I mean, we are in a deflationary, a temporary deflationary period. The market, the inflationary period's topped in June. Crude oil's, you know, was at 130. It's gone down to, to 90. You know, lumber was at 1700. It went to 450. Copper was at five dollars. It's gone down to three, three, 340. So there have been a lot, a lot of raw commodities, grains, wheat went up on the Ukraine thing, and it's fallen apart. So there are a lot of raw materials that have come down, but. When you go to the supermarket, you know your eggs and your poultry and your <laughs> your and your you know and your milk and, and you know they have not come down. It, it takes a while for that to happen, and I don't know if it's I don't think it's going to happen um, that easily. You know, right. Well, as we um, wrap up our visit with you, which I'm so appreciative of today, um, taking your Sunday afternoon to visit with us. Um, what other than what you've already uh, shared with us would you like uh, for people to know going forward because you spoke of next year you even spoke of 2024 so it sounds like the shakeup is going to uh, continue for a while I, I, I think um, the rest of the decade, I mean, the, the, the most optimistic time I see for the rest of the de decade is that if the stock market makes a low at the end of next year in 2023, that maybe it'll go up to the beginning of 2026. Um, so I don't know exactly why that's going to happen. Things again, bear markets tend to fall, go for you know, you know, two or three years. Um, so that that may be the last period I think that I feel good about long-term investing um, and the economy. Um, again, I, I am concerned about, you know, we have dwindling resources, we have problems with food distribution and supply distribution, and um, there's just a lot of problems. We're a one world family now, and it's kind of like uh, somebody has a problem and, you know, Europe has a big problem. I mean, th then they stop buying in the US, you know, so it's, um, um, it's very complicated, but I mean, I, I do think the US has a chance to recover uh, 2024, 2024, 25, 26. Um, but then the end of the decade looks to be a mess. You know, um, you know, Saturn and Pisces, Saturn and Aries, uh, just just are going to be um, quite difficult. And then you have the Saturn Neptune conjunction, which is deflationary too. So uh, it, it, it's just you know we we have we've had many golden years, you know, and you know there are these larger cycles, you know. Um, you know, even for the longest time we had the world war cycle, it was due in 2019 and it came about with the pandemic really, you know, um, and now we're, you know, powers that be want us to move us toward world war. So I, I don't, I don't, we have to kind of raise consciousness. We have to be kind and help people. We have to give to charity. Um, and there are a lot of people that are going to need help and we just have to do whatever we can if we have, and if we're abundant, we have to help others. So that's the most important thing. Wow, what a, what a perfect way to wrap this up. I agree. 
and for everyone you need to go to fortunecast.com for two cast.com f-o-r-t-u-c-a-s-t.com and uh, we'll have that down in our notes and um if you have any questions let me know in the comments but Barry, thank you so much for visiting with us, for enlightening um, those of us who knew about what you do. You know, you write for us every month, um, Astro Finance and Astrologic Magazine, which I always look forward to. Um, the magazine comes out on the first of the month and I always read it instantly to see what's going to, what you're predicting for that month. And um, then, of course, your fortune cast, which you have coming out, um, you said daily, right? Daily, right. And I, and I have I have a weekly astrology magazine, too. Um, it's free. If you go to appliedvedicastrology.com, appliedvedicastrology.com, I have a free astrology where I talk about psychology and spiritual stuff. And you know, it's the kind of stuff I used to contribute to for you, you know. We will put that in the uh, description here as well, so everybody can reach you. And, um, and for those who are getting to know Barry for the very first time, who are not astrologers, I, you, this, is a, this is a way to understand the stock market and the economy from a different, a deeper perspective, from an ancient science perspective, which is very much what, uh, what we're about, what I'm about with publishing Astrologic Magazine. So um, bringing that into modern practice, which you do so well, Barry, thank you. Thank you. So, so great being here, Victoria. I look forward to catching up with you soon. Take care. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.